All right, according to reports, the agriculture sector in Nigeria has contributed about 21% to the country's GDP, which ranges from food down to job opportunities. With this knowledge in mind, President Bola Tinubu has enjoined state gardeners across the Federation to prioritize agriculture by investing in food crops in order to drive down the current high cost. While speaking at the Global Integrity International Award, he acknowledged the food crisis Nigeria is currently facing and noted that although the government has a responsibility to power agriculture, the citizens should also engage in some form of subsistence farming. Joining us in the studio is a food security expert, African farmer, Mogaji. Good morning. Good it's morning. good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. Now, the question on the lips of some Nigerians is how did we get here? When you look at the papers this morning, uh, you see that uh, food inflation has risen by 2.59%. Okay, that's focusing on the FCT, but Nigeria's headline inflation rate is at all-time high at 33.95% in May, with food inflation also rising to 40.66% from the 40.53% recorded in April. And we have been having conversations, especially you coming to speak about this, like you projected. You spoke like a prophet at some time <laughs> that, um, you know, this was going to happen. And here we are. What really did we miss? What didn't we do? Let's begin from there. Okay. Um, we did not pay attention to experts. And I say this with all sense of responsibilities. Three phone calls that I was requesting for, just three phone calls not money, would have drastically reduced the impact of what we have. Three phone calls. Mm. Uh, but people don't pay attention to food. Um, some of our leaders, they've been out of that gap of knowing how much food costs. Many have had the privilege and opportunity you know, to have moved out of a certain phase. So when I was talking to a few that tomatoes, in private, I said 200,000. But to media, I said 80 to 120 because I wanted to manage the anxiety, you know. Um, and everybody could not see it. Not just government, not just our leaders in government. Leaders in private sector, leaders in the um, institutions recognized by government and private sector interfacing. I went around. I did Zoom. They had Zoom calls. I was part of meetings. None just paid attention. I remember there was a program I was on, and one of the women was saying, let's pay attention to this man who is saying that, and it was private sector, who is saying this will go up an advocacy group, and nobody paid attention. So not people are pointing hands now, government, leaders, politicians, but the private sector, unfortunately, I can't mention names, you know. So we got here because food security is not real security for us. Real security in Nigeria is carrying harms. Food security is not real security across board. And that, I have established that. So we did not pay attention. Uh, if you saw the clips I released, yeah, I, 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 at least I was here three times. Mm. Three times this year. You know, so we just don't pay attention, and that's it. I, I'm wondering who you tried calling. There's three <laughs> phone calls that you, you <laughs> mentioned, so that we can narrow things down, and perhaps when we are driving our conversation, we can, you know, point to these three phone calls, what, how necessary it is that you need to have it, and then perhaps we can expand the conversation so we can address this issue, because all of us are going to the market. Not mm -hmm. all of us are in government or in uh, um positions where we are privileged not to find it difficult to buy some of these things. We all go to the market. Yes. Um, you know, the reason why I did that video, I went to a market with my son, trying to teach him, I like to cook, trying to teach him market things. And I met a woman there who came to buy meat. And they told, the butcher now told the woman, she was overpriced, the butcher now said, it looks like you've not cooked meat in three months. Mm for you to be pricing this way, and everybody laughed. And I felt for her because she was going through pain. Probably the husband was not even earning. And the woman, you know, was raising an alarm, and the meat seller now said, Madam, you better go and price tomato and peppers because I will not return, I will not accept this meat if you return it. Mm. 
Oh my goodness. And I was like, no way, this can't continue. Right. And, uh, and so the thing is, what has gone wrong has gone wrong. July is close by where the prices will begin to go down maybe another two weeks. But the trend I'm seeing is that like three years ago, when there was a food blockage, I was on this program also saying, let's do this. And I want some people three weeks prior to that, that based on this trend, this is likely to happen in these regions. We don't pay attention and we are repeating cycles. Right. As much as we're, hang on, please. You, you haven't narrowed it down to, because I'm certain that there are those who are watching and wondering three phone calls to whom? And okay. Where, what happened? Why were you unable to reach these persons? If perhaps they are listening to us, they can know now that you are part of our problem. So, so, so let me say this. I, I won't be able to mention names because some things may go further worse. Uh, bec but these people, I, I, and I kept sending SMS, WhatsApp to say, this is coming. This is coming, not just meeting. I tried to see one particular person who said, okay, see my PA. And I said, that's your PA. And they tried to you know, structure a meeting. And I did tell them, we don't want money. For some people, I was able to say, we need a phone call to an MD of a government parastatal and two commissioners of police. Okay. The private sector was willing to fund. Okay. But... What has happened over years, this is like my, this is next year becomes 30 years that I've been in the field operating on government infrastructure. And I know that sometimes if there is no call from above to say we are interested in this, you, your project will not succeed. I have lost phenomenal amounts of money and we just wanted, you know, some cooperation. For, forgive me for still, you know, <laughs> staying on this matter. How crucial are these people to what is going on with regards to food inflation? These yeah. three people, we must understand. It's crucial because there are infrastructures and facilities that exist that we can leverage. And so when I shot the video and I said in 72 hours we could deploy, I mean 70, 30 years of my life next year, just focusing on how Nigeria can be food secure. Funding myself, not NGO, not a foreign donor. All this, check, check my track here. Everything that happens beginning of the year, we come here to analyze it. Absolutely. Unfortunately, every year, like seven, eight years, it happens and we analyze it again and it goes on. You know, and, and I'm not seeing, I've been having meetings. People have been calling from top places. They don't mean well for the president. I'm not uh, ashamed to say it. They don't mean well for the nations. Everybody is talking about their pocket when they're talking to me. And I'm like, I'm talking about the nation. Mm -hmm. You are talking about packaging something small. Mm -hmm. And I was still in a meeting um, last week. Um, and I met with a group of people. And I'm still seeing the same thing. I funded myself to the meeting and everything, especially Southwest. And I've been narrowing around Southwest. And I've seen something recently. Um, the governors around Southwest may be handicapping their commissioners of agriculture. Why? By virtue of the strategy they want to implement. They have competent commissioners of agriculture, but the strategies may be wrong. Okay, before, before we talk about that, uh, because recently uh, the Southwest governors obviously had a meeting to talk about this and they uh, gave a mandate to their commissioners for agriculture. But one will see uh, the level of urgency that you, you, you used uh, in you know, uh, talking about this issue and trying to you know, get help for Nigeria. But let's be specific. Talk to us about some of the determinants, some of the things that you saw you were able to say that, okay, by July, this by is June, what is going to By the end of May. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so since 1999, I've been studying the flow of food from the north to the south and monitoring most governors across regions. And for about five, six years, I went around a bit of northern states to go and actually practice farming so that we can bridge that gap. And I actually saw 
I can say it was 70% failure for me because everything we try to do, you know, to meet up with the major crisis, the climate, the people, the infrastructure did not support it. Mm. It was so, my prediction was not necessarily theory. It was, I had gone for years to try and I knew, okay, Southwest and south of the country had the position, you know, and, and the facilities to do that, but did not have the knowledge mm. on how to do it. You know, so I, I did that because I also, one thing people are not paying attention also to is there's an initiative on wheat currently going on, um, or that happened last year, stroke this year. That wheat initiative also reduced the production of tomatoes and peppers. Mm. The challenge we are having is we don't have people with relevant information who can map that this in a good initiative you want to implement. How does they affect every other thing? So we focus on we want to grow wheat to be wheat sufficient, forgetting that it's the same land that supplies tomatoes and peppers. That means over 100,000 hectares so of land. So are you saying the story about uh, tomato Ebola was false? No, it's not false, but not in the capacity that affected this. Mm -hmm. A bit of climate change, okay? Ideally, May, June, this will extend May, June. What is going to make, make it extend to July? March heat. The heat in March has been unprecedented. In the south, all of us could not cope. In the north, it's harsher. So people did not fathom that to this, because when the fruits produce flowers, the flowers are bought when there's too much heat. That means your pepper and tomato will not come out. Mm. So it's a cocktail of activities right. beyond the fact that south, south of the country generally have not leveraged and positioned to bridge that gap. So the south has not been prepared, paying a lot of lip service, and the north cannot produce for climate reasons. So it's a cocktail. So, so let's now go back to what the southwest governors are trying to do because they are saying that we must begin to focus aggressively on matters of agriculture as yes. it is. And you mentioned earlier that uh, they are somehow handicapping their commissioners. You need to break that down so that we, we know what to do yes. in such a way that they are not handicapping their commissioners and we get the result that we need at the end of the day so we can breach this gap that you're talking about. So when I say they are handicapping their commissioners unconsciously, it's not a conscious thing. But they're trying to integrate a regional cooperation with this crisis that we can prevent as against allowing their commissioners who are competent to run their projects but have operate on a policy level regionally. Mm -hmm. So right, what's going to happen, what I've seen, I was in the meeting, what I've seen is the commissioners will implement individually as a state but the regional arrangement they are doing will handicap them to Why? be able to run. Yeah, because you see, policies and implementation, they are two different things. Absolutely. So when the governors are pushing a work together, one model kind of thing, yeah. and it, what works, the labor charges in Lagos is different from Ogun. Okay. In Ondo is different. Even in Ogun, there are four types of labor charges in Ogun State. So when you are trying to push one thing for everybody, it won't work, considering what we have. Mm. So it's unconscious, but that's, it's like asking the commissioners to run 100 meters, and you put handcuffs in their hands. So the peculiarities are what you're talking yes, about. Yes, implementation. State. So the governors should not make that mistake. And secondly, the commissioners, what I've seen happen across the country is the good, governors have good intentions, but the accountant general of each state mm -hmm. is not involved in the conversation. The conversation. Mm -hmm. So when the commission, when they have put the budget, approved the budget, it is the accountant general that says we have money or we don't have money. Mm -hmm. So that also stops the flow and the movement of the commissioners, which also relates to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture too. Right. So what the governors need to do across the country is to ask the accountant general, how have you been funding the Ministry of Agriculture that I have been talking about? Mm. The goal I've been trying to achieve. Can you show me? 
If the governor does not ask for that, if the, pre if the president does not ask for that, they may find out that they have competent hands who are incapacitated. But, but the commissioners or the, the minister is supposed to always give that information to the president that this is how much I've gotten and this is what is left. That is what is in, supposed in to In theory. Right. But in practical, nobody goes to report anybody. Mm. No, you know, because these things are interval. You will still need something later. You can delay. Is, is, is it reporting or you're trying to ensure that your work is done? Really? Yes, you're trying to ensure that your work is done. But uh, in practical, you need to manage people. Mm, diplomatic. Yeah, but if the president is saying, Accountant General, I need this done. I'm interested in this. You give me a report of how you have been releasing the funds. I want it on a monthly basis. Then the Accountant General knows that I have to do it. The, no commissioner will come to the governor and say, sir, they may say, oh, sir, we need to facilitate this, but mm -hmm. they won't report. So the governors need to know that this is the loophole. Mm. Once they plug that loophole, once they ensure that Accountant General is in the Committee of Food Security with the commissioners, then things will flow. This is one of the reasons why we don't get things implemented. And the timing, they get the funding also, because... Private sector is always complaining that, oh, government is slow, government is slow. They don't know the processes that happen internally. Mm. Okay, so when we understand these things, I pay the price to understand these things. When you understand these things, then you will know how to work. You would see the commissioners will perform better when the governors help them to implement this. Mm. All right. Very important. So um, two things that uh, the president uh, talked about while also urging uh, the governors to prioritize agriculture. You mentioned the fact that uh, even for some of the items that we have currently, there is a level of extortion, especially among Nigerians that we are extorting ourselves. So I want you to address that. Then also why we are also trying to you know, put the blame on uh, some governors, uh, doesn't it seem that uh, the part of blame should also be on Nigerians as regards the fact that we may have moved from subsistence farming and that was part of what the, the president said yesterday, that everyone needs to start planting. Okay. Yes, so everyone needs to pl start planting something, but that does not feed the country. Mm. That feed also families. helps your subsistence feeding. Okay. Subsistence farming will aid your subsistence feeding, but does not take care of it. Now, so subsistence farming is good, but will not feed the nation. Mm. It is policy that feeds the nation, not tomato that feeds people. It is policy bad policies we've had series of policies that has not been right and i would say this now in the last five years we've had a lot of policy some assault mm -hmm. eggs are expensive today because of one policy in may 2020 one policy to restrict importers of maize from having access to forex mm. meanwhile I recall that year, March, I think, 17 or March 14, March thereabout, I had had a program with all the cooperatives of oil and gas to say, you guys need to invest back end into poultry because there will be a lot of need for this. And even the U.S. government had come out that Nigeria would import about 100,000 metric tons, which is a one million bags. And somebody convinced the former president to take that action because they believe we can produce the corn. So at the end of the day, in two weeks, the price of corn moved from 45,000 to 145 mm -hmm. May. By December, it was 210, and it kept going. As of December last year, a ton of corn was 510. As I speak to you today, it is 810 plus thousand naira for 10 bags. Mm -hmm. So the eggs that we are buying, eggs is not also going to Go If the farmer must make profit, eggs should be selling more than 5,000 naira now. Mm. The farmers are not making profit. They are shutting down. Yeah, That's why we are not having eggs. Mm. So we, we are not policy. Here now, currently, we are having policy January 23 on this program. I did say that government would need to allow importation of food, but strictly back-end. It should not be public. Mm. And it should be with the people who are already importing grains and coal. Just work with them, give them funds, 
so that you can work with them and manage them. Mm. Back end, so that it doesn't affect everybody. But what happened? So the presidency kept saying that, oh, we don't need to import food. We don't need to import food. At the end of the day, May 1, there's a document that came out that will be import, that allows people to import food. Mm. You know what that will do? Again, December and January, for local investors, mm. many of them will cry. Mm. Because, you, know? the, you see, what happened? Trends. What happens is we will not be able to manage the level of importation. So many people who also want to save the country by investing and being patriotic will lose money because people will over import. Mm, and crash. And crash. I know many banks that tried to fund corn and a couple of things a few years back, and this policy distorted. The president still has a few weeks to amend that, not to stop it, to amend it such that it will protect the local people who will be putting money and foreign investors coming in. All these decisions have a way of affecting things. Policy, if we get policy stable, if we get the right information you know, to the governors, to the president, we'll be food secure. And, and you know, pre, um, when you hear of the state of emergency, then um, it was said that we, it was affordability that was a challenge, not availability. Right. And before then, on one of your programs also, I had said affordability. But the people that feed the consultants, because the president is not an agri expert, it, de it depends on people to feed him. Yeah. The people that feed and is looking like they are not in tune with the feed field. So when they announced that affordability was the problem, not availability, and government began to pay attention to affordability, mm -hmm. discovered later that it is availability, mm -hmm. and now began to say, okay, both affordability and availability. Imagine if the president and governors get the right information first time. Mm. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. They need the right information. Let me ask you this. We have a special advisor on national security. Mm. With a state of emergency, who is the special advisor on food security? Mm. None. Because we do not take it as a security It is issue. not a security issue. Right. So bottom line is, until we see it as a national security issue, where you want to construct a road and there's a food security advisor saying, sir, this affects this. When you want to do pipeline, this affects this. When President Donald Trump was announcing 5G during, during, lock, during the COVID, it was the vice president by the right and secretary of agriculture, who is the minister of agriculture, by the left, and they were announcing 5G. Food security is real security until we begin to see it. So we will uh, not be food secure. As it is now, we are, we are where we are already. And uh, like you have rightly mentioned, this is why you're here to give the right information so that we can move forward, forward. progressively. Yes. As it is with regards to this matter. So Nigeria can be food secure. Yes. It's very important. So talk to us from the part of governors now. Um, there are talks about, okay, let's do this and see how we have seen Niger states, Lagos state collaborating with Niger states. Talk to us about collaborations and how far that will move us. Yeah. And then also these persons, these three persons, <laughs> uh, do you, uh, we are not calling names, uh, we are not mentioning names, but you have, you know, at least pointed us in the direction of some persons. Uh, are you still going to look at how you can get their attention to see that we address this issue so we don't find ourselves here again? Yes, yeah, so um, honestly, I'm not interested in reaching out to them again. I understand they've seen the videos. Okay. So we have people everywhere, just like they have people everywhere. You know, some of us have done this over the years. We have people around everybody. So bottom line is, I'm not reaching out. If they want to reach out, reach out. I have sent a lot of messages. They've seen the videos. Um, there's a time you get patriotic. There's another time you now go into action. Mm. Now I'm going after the youths right. and private sector to say, if we train them, will you fund them so that we prosper together? Mm. That is what I can do, not what I cannot do. Reaching out to those people to work with us, I don't have control over that, but I have control over what I do with the youths. Mm. I have the commissioners across the country willing, so private sector, you know, let's get it done. Then, um, as regards 
the three people. I know now that they also are on the edge to see that because they are part of the people that get to be questioned on a regular basis. Mm. Okay. Um, I've not seen the minister, but I'm seeing the minister very soon. But I know the minister is on top of what he needs to do mm. based on assessment. We have a permanent secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture who is also a performer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have an administrator, we have a performer. So we should be finding out what is actually not making things work. Mm. All right. And moving forward quickly, what we should do, like I mentioned. Yeah, state what we should do state-wise, more states should collaborate like Lagos. Um, I would have loved more Southwest states collaborating with um, Lagos states. So Niger becomes backup, okay? Because the cost of food is another challenge. Foods that will move from Ogun that has a landmass, or Yoda has a landmass, to Lagos is cheaper than food that will move from um, Niger. So we need to work together, you know, to be able to get that to happen. And personally, um, a lot of people have been asking, what should we do? What can we do? Mm. So this Friday, I'm hosting a free thing on how private sector can come in how they can leverage on government. Because private sector, when I have conversations, they say that, oh, um, we don't need government. Mm. But you cannot do anything successfully at a scale without government. So mm. how to leverage government, existing policies that you don't need new ones for, and how government also should position to work with private sector. So I'll be hosting that life uh, for everybody. So hopefully we'll see a drop in prices of tomatoes in July. Is that yeah, something from the mid of no, July. We're waiting Maybe. for his prediction. <laughs> of course, again. From, from, because it will be coming out from Ogbomosho. Okay. Oh, okay. Odoaba, Ogbomosho. Ogbomosho plays a key role and he's saying. Mm. So tomatoes, mostly tomatoes will be coming out from Ogbomosho and he's saying that's what will drop it, not from the north. Mm. So if they produce at that time, what if we pay attention to them? Ogbomosho... Or your state, basically, right. is responsible for when prices of food comes okay. down. and when they Yeah, and when they bridge it. I've operated in Oyo for about 17 years. Sorry. Unfortunately, our time is <laughs> up. <laughs> we have to leave the conversation here now. Food security expert, African farmer Mogaji, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right.